Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the continuation of this uh, restoration of the Bryce Grau, um Automatic Bryce Grau 8. This has been on standby for a little while because I've been doing a few other projects, but um, I got back to this one because my next task was to get the FM to work. And I'm actually happy to report that it's doing pretty well. I've got the speaker connected to the workshop speaker. I've got the antenna in here. This is just going to the FM antenna and I'm going to push it on there. And we'll see what we get. Volume up. It's pretty good. I've put it on manual. There we go. No great mystery there. The FM is back perfectly. And what I did was I checked everything I, as I usually do. All the uh, circuits going into there with the exception of the, the front end, that actual box over there. I try not to mess with that. And uh, I was fortunate. Everything seems to be okay. The one thing I did change was the discriminator capacitor, the ratio detector capacitor in the actual ratio detector in there. That was slightly off. It was pretty easily accessible and that got done and FM is back, which is pretty anticlimactic because, <laughs> yeah, it's just there. All right. So what did I do next? Well, I went next to the one mystery section, which is the automatic tuning. And what I needed to do was to actually uh, test or check the power supply section first. If you recall, there was a power supply section for that stage, which needed uh, needed to be checked properly. And then I went a little bit further. So here we have it again, and we're focusing on this section. This is the power supply for the actual um, motor and actually does something else as well. It acts as a negative bias for the um, EBF89, rather for the EF86, which is something I hadn't realized actually. Um, let me show you what I mean. If we look at the uh, EF86 over here, we've actually got a grounded cathode. Now, if there's a grounded cathode, how do you get negative voltage on the grid? Well, here it is. There's a capacitor there, which is where the audio comes in from the volume pot. So there's no DC on there. You need a negative voltage on here. So if you follow this line down here, we follow it, we follow it, we come to a two meg resistor over here. Keep following it, following it, following it. And it says here, minus 1.3 volts. That's our negative bias. We follow that, we come to this point over here. So in checking this section and changing these caps, which I did do, I um, basically got made sure effectively that this was working correctly. And it was because we were getting audio. So that was not too much of a surprise. But uh, other than that, these uh, lines go to all this section over here. And this section over here is the part that basically detects the uh, tuning and then goes ahead and operates the motor so that the motor over here can um, select the strongest tuning point. You've got uh, levers left and right where you click left and right to start the tuning. 
and then the motor does the job of reacting to the signals you're getting from the ECL80 and also from the EABC80. The ABC80 is basically a detector, which is interesting because we use this in the uh, We've seen this as a detector tube in, in the radio section sometimes. And what it does is it's got uh, the IFs coming in as usual. You can see the IF transformers there. So this is basically an IF transformer. And you tune it and this thing detects. So basically it um, takes the audio signal, checks for the highest amplitude, and uses that to, um, to control the position or the rotation of this motor. I think, I think I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on this because it's not working. <laughs> After all that, I changed quite a few capacitors. Um, all the caps that needed changing on here were changed with the exception of this motor capacitor, that one there. That's a 0 0.35 microfarads. I think it's fine and I don't have a spare one. This, uh, this one here, this orange one, was also changed. Um, it's the one that sticks out at the back and I'll show you, I'll be showing you those. So everything else I have not checked and I just hoped, I was really just hoping that um, by replacing the caps, putting in the tubes, this thing would work. But it doesn't. Um, so let me show you what it does do. Okay, what I've done here is I've got some, I've got to tune to a station. Let me try and get talk radio. Right, I've got a talk station now and it's tuned to that station and if I put that on automatic, which is up, I can feel this thing vibrate. I can feel it vibrate, you can't see it. Now, if I if I try to, if I flick this to the right, watch this very carefully. You see, it's trying. Flick to the left and it goes back. You see, I didn't even flick that. It just went back to the tuning. Watch. Now, if I do this, it goes to the left. So this is, should be sort of fast forward, fast rewind, fast tune, but it's not working. It's trying to work. And this, this thing is latching. This thing's supposed to latch till it finds a station and then it's supposed to let go. It's a solenoid. What it actually does is it's sort of, uh, it sort of mutes the sound as well when you, when it's, when it's going forward and then it finds a station and it then releases, but it's not working, which means there's obviously something wrong in there. And as I said, I can, I can feel this thing fighting me a little bit, sort of trying to stay in tune. I can feel it vibrate. And in fact, on my Freiburg 8, when it's in tune, it's, it's doing this all the time. It's sort of going backwards and forwards all the time as it stays, uh, basically locks on to automatic frequency control. It's pretty cool to watch, but this one's not doing it. And I'm not sure what it is. So I need to look at this a little bit closer. See, there's nothing too mysterious here. This is the clutch mechanism that uh, operates between AM and FM. Okay. It needs a bit of adjusting, I think. It's sort of taking a while to snap back, but that's besides the point. That's a secondary issue. This thing here, um, it then just rotates. You can see it over there. Basically just rotates the, uh, the dial, or when you tune it, it rotates in, and obviously it's come to the end, of course, over there. But if you carry on, it just rotates. So this motor, which has got a gear in here, rotates that shaft. And this motor is being controlled by that, um, the basically that uh, automatic frequency control circuit. It's, it's a motor control circuit that is latched in with AFC. We may go into a lot more detail. I may have to go into a lot more detail. 
<laughs> this thing is not working. As you can see, I've got this capacitor here. This is basically replacing that one. It's a point, uh, 0.4 microfarad. This is 0.47. Okay, close enough. Um, this is across one of the windings. Before I put this one in, this was doing exactly the same. Okay, there is a motor capacitor, which I'll show you in a minute. But I think, I think this could just be a matter of lubrification. I think I may have to just remove this whole thing, clean it up properly. And I know it can be done. I've done it before. I did this on my uh, Freiburg 8. I removed the whole thing. I dismantled the whole thing. I cleaned and lubricated everything. But I'm not sure that this is going to be the case here because one of these windings, these are the motor, uh, what is it, status? One of them might actually be burnt out. And there's a way of checking. Once you've sort of desoldered all the wires, you can actually check if these status are, um, if these coils are whole. And if I remember correctly, again, it's been a long time since I did the other one. If I remember correctly, the other one um, was actually, one of them was burnt out and I found a replacement. It took a while, but I got the exact replacement. And these are four, and I think you've got to get very specific ones. You know, the phasing is incredibly important here. If you get the phasing wrong, <laughs> the motor is sort of fighting each other. As it is, it's fighting each other. The way this works is two coils are pulling it one way, the other two coils are pulling the other way, and they're in phase, so they stay sort of in the same place. And then when your, um, when your tuning is out, the phase shifts, so it'll turn the way that it needs to until it basically gets back in phase. It's, it's, I have to read up a lot more. At the time, I did a full bit of research on how this thing worked, and I quite honestly have forgotten it all. So I need to read up on this again, and that's probably what I'm going to do next. I would, I'm not sure that I need to replace this. What I have done is I've checked the tubes. I replaced the ABC-80 with a brand new EABC-80. Well, it's old stock, but it's unused. I replaced the ECL-80 um, with the one that is in my Freiburg 8, which I know is working because I don't have a, a new one for that. But they do tell you the tubes have to be in very good condition for this thing to work. So I made sure that I got, um, make, made sure that the tubes I put in there are working. So it's not an issue with the tubes. So it's going to be an issue of patience. So what I'm going to do next is, um, well, let me show you the inside and show you what it is that I've changed. Nothing too dramatic either because it's just a few caps, but um, there is a motor cap there that I want to show you, which might be the problem. And before I start removing this whole thing, I may just look for a motor cap, uh, 0.35 microfarads. We'll see it in a second. Otherwise, I'll have to remove this. And here we have the underside. There is There were a couple of capacitors over here that were replaced. The one that um, might be the only one I haven't replaced is this one. It's a motor capacitor, 0.35 microfarads, 500 volts. I hope it's not that. I don't know that I can get one of these. This, I think, has got to be pretty much the right value. You can't sort of just mess around with it. But we shall see. We shall see. Other than that, this thing looks pretty much like it did before. You know, a few more capacitors replaced here. There were a couple of electrolytics over there. This was uh, these these electrolytics over here. These are one is here, one is on the underside. These are the uh, filter caps on that secondary supply. There were you know a few more of those paper caps over here that were replaced. I found nothing wrong with them really. I mean they weren't shorted or you know completely open, but I did find that they were slightly out of spec, so I replaced them all. And as it stands, everything here has been replaced. So, you know, once you've looked at the obvious, you now have to look at the difficult. And that's what I'm going to have to do, is remove this guy. This guy looks pretty intimidating because, hey, it's a motor inside a tube radio. <laughs> I mean, how much more incongruous can you get? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit intimidating, so I'm going to have to do a lot of research, remove this thing, and you see everything sort of comes out. This this whole thing here sort of comes out of there. There's a screw there, there's another one on the underside. You disconnect the shaft with that attachment there, and then you've got... Um... Oh, Jesus, thing's heavy. You've got all these connections on the bottom side. I think they're all basically on the one side, which makes it easier to handle. Take those off. You actually take off this um, 
there's a, a, a tag board here and you can just make a very careful note of what it is you do. Solder, make sure you don't get it wrong because this thing obviously works with highish voltages. And then you can start dismantling this whole thing and I'm hoping, hoping that that's what it'll be. Which is what I'm going to carry on with next and report back as soon as I have something. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed this short one. And uh, if you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And um, I'm going to continue with this. I may have something in between. As I said before, this project is going to be pretty much a fill the gap project. Whenever I have time, uh, I have people asking me to do restorations of stuff. And I, you know, I consider that more interesting, more priority. And so this thing will be done as I, I find time to do it. But this is certainly one that I enjoy. And um, yeah, once again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you back soon for another video. Bye for now and stay safe.